Welcome back to The Glenn Alex Show. Our mission is for you to be joyful, connected, confident, and complete. The life experience we call wealth, W-E-L-L-T-H, which is health plus other riches. I'm Glenn Alex, author of Living in Total Health, The Wealth Counselor, and Clinical Social Worker. My life's work is about health because healthy people are more genuine, are more giving, and are more loving. And quite frankly, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually healthy people respect humanity and do not intentionally harm self or others. All of these harms being perpetrated in the world, rapes, murders, thefts, deceptions, um, are perpetrated by people who are unhealthy, people who have voice in their lives that they attempt to fill by harming others. Healthy people don't do that. They don't. So please join me on this journey towards health so we can all be more joyful, confident, connected, and complete and create a better world for everyone. Create your best health in 2021 with Glenn's special limited coaching offer. Simply buy a new copy of Living in Total Health from Glenn's Amazon distributor, book CH148, and then send Glenn your receipt and schedule your free 30 minute consultation to uh, look at what your biggest barriers are to your optimal health. You must provide a copy of your receipt to schedule and this offer is only available if the purchase is made from book CH148. Please see the link below. Thank you. Uh, please help me welcome this episode's guest, uh, Tom Laponte. How are you today? I'm good. How are you doing? Thank you for having me, Glenn. Oh, you're very welcome. I'm, I'm very happy that you had time to do this for us. So please introduce yourself. Tell us what you do and what kind of work you do. Fantastic. Um, so my name is Tom. Uh, people know me as the sleep guy. And I, I about six, seven months ago, I decided to take the show on the road. So I uh, put uh, some videos together. Uh, my background is in film production video production and project management, which is uh, really far away from sleep. But uh, <laughs> what ended up happening was in uh, 2013, my father was diagnosed with uh, stage four cancer. And as a result of it, I had, a, I had very little time to spend with him. And most of that time was spent around sleep. He couldn't get any. And it really inspired me, put a big kind of a gash, he was my best friend, you know, he kind of put a gash in my heart and I really felt bad that I wasn't able to get him the answers that we needed, especially in the time frame that he had left. And so uh, when he passed, I made a, a conscious decision to say, I'm gonna dedicate my, my, my life to really helping others find the value of sleep and really find answers where I, I was, when I was researching, I couldn't find any answers. The answers were very generic and uh, I, I, I couldn't even find people that I can speak to with sleep conditions. And so I said, well, people are so private about their sleep conditions, why is that, you know? And so I went down this journey and I put together a, a, a plan. I said, you know, first I gotta figure out if there is some kind of certifications that I can get. And so, you know, being the school guy, I, I started doing a lot of research. Um, I ended up finding some programs that would allow me to become a sleep coach. And, and it was very different than becoming a sleep doctor. I wasn't ready to go back to med school and uh, you know go, go to med school and become a full, full on doctor. But I did wanna uh, leverage some of my experiences from the past. Um, so the experiences of, of being a facilitator, being a project manager and understanding all the aspects of production, I said, this is perfect for us to train people 
on sleep. And so I said, you know, let's do a mission statement here. I want to, one, make sure that the people that we interview have sleep in their lives, some kind of issue that they're dealing with. I want it to be from the consumer perspective. Two, I want to bring on the experts and I want to find out what are the latest trends, right? What's, what's going on in the sleep world? Because it seems to be diverse and changing. And three, what are the products that are most effective? And let's do some trials. Let's see if some of these trials work and let's put it on, let's put it all out there. Like I just went and got a sleep study done on myself uh, because I have sleep apnea and, uh, and I just completed it and I'm gonna be on a CPAP soon. And I'm also going to do uh, some other research on sleep surgeries such as Inspire. So enough about me. But <laughs> I've been up to for the last, I'd say, seven, eight years, but I just kicked off uh, the entire coaching practice and everything about six, seven months ago, and it's, it's been doing well. Okay, okay. Well, first of all, I'm sorry for your loss. It's very difficult to lose someone that we're very close to. Um, I, I am glad, though, that it it led you to, to do something po not just positive, but powerful, and um, that will help everyone else because... I'm about total health and sleep is critical. I, I know so many people that underestimate the value of sleep. So thank you for, for doing this work. So tell us um, what exactly does the sleep coach do? Well, before we even go into that, let's, let's just think about what sleep is and why it's important, right? So okay. the first thing that we have to understand is that it's a vital piece. It's like one of the pillars of wellness. And you being so interested in wellness, I think we had a perfect match here in order to talk about it. So it's often neglected by many people. It's a vital component of being well and, and not getting enough sleep. Uh, produces excess weight gain and produces all kinds of ailments. And, and the thing is, you go down this deadly path where you start with a sleep issue that isn't diagnosed and you end up with something that may complicate it, like the coronavirus and what it did to people right now. We have something called corona insomnia that's happening now and people are getting completely impacted by the fact that they're not they're not sleeping they're insomniacs at home that never knew they were insomniacs and so the sleep world in itself is just super interesting and super diverse now sleep coaching appealed to me because sleep doctors take care of the medical and what i mean by that is there are different types of sleep doctors there are sleep doctors that specialize in md practices meaning they prescribe medications based on the conditions they see. So uh, obstructive sleep apnea is an actual disorder that can be treated with a CPAP. That is the course of action that doctors take. So you go to see a doctor, a primary MD, or a sleep, a sleep doctor who specializes in uh, the, the field, and they will prescribe, after a sleep study, a machine. There are other doctors that will go over uh, your insomnia and prescribe medication, specifically okay. to treat your sleep and your waking time. And there are other doctors that will sleep, that will deal with like exploding head syndrome and restless leg syndrome, which are real conditions that need prescriptions, right? Now, that's that's all fine and dandy, but what happens to the rest? There's about 3 million people out there that don't need any of the medicines. They just need better sleep hygiene and better sleep routines. So what do you do about them? And that's a lot of people, right? So I, uh, sleep coaches, that's where we fill the, the gap. Not only do we provide the services of giving you a routine and working with you to understand what your sleep cycle is like, we do this by utilizing the power of a sleep diary Right. But we also have all the connections with the doctors and the psychologists and the people that are out there that are specialists in sleep. And so it puts us in a very unique uh, position to be a bridge. So we do not treat and we do not diagnose. So I want to make sure the audience understands we are specialists in educating the general public. Mm -hmm. We are like think of us like you're you're a, a wellness and a, and a success coach. Right. And we're very similar in the world of sleep. So a person would come to me when they want to change their uh, sleep situation or their environment, or they have an issue and they're not sure what it is. Well, I can sleep and we can, I can go through all of the, the history and I can say, well, you know, this is medical. You need to go 
see a particular type of doctor, or just a psychological. Uh, a lot of my uh, associates and colleagues are sleep psychologists. So maybe you don't need to see an MD. And there, there's a very important thing that people don't recognize about sleep coaches. Uh, the one thing that they don't recognize is that sleep coaches, we don't have uh, any skin in the game with regards to trying to promote a particular treatment, right? We're not, we don't have any skin in the game. We're not saying go take a particular medicine or go to a pharmaceutical or- You don't get any kickbacks. You know, yeah, exactly. We're not, we're not in it from that perspective. So we have your best interest as a patient advocate or as a client advocate. We have your best interest at heart in that regard. Another thing people don't realize about sleep coaches is we speak their language. So doctors have a specific language that we understand and that you may not, and you may, you may have difficulty understanding how to be your own advocate. So coming to a sleep coach, we talk your language, and then we can say, here's all the things you need to do to talk properly to your doctor. And, and just so you know, uh, doctors 20, 30 years ago, they weren't trained in sleep. How many doctors does that make up for the United States? Just in America. Think about the amount of doctors out there that have this much experience in sleep and that only deal with medicines and only deal, oh, you have insomnia, take this. Um, that's a very knee-jerk reaction. Now, all the doctors in the past 10 years have had electives in sleep and are getting very sleep educated. That didn't exist before. So that's that's uh, that's in a nutshell. Okay. Well, well I'm uh, in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think uh, when you're talking about sleep hygiene, mm -hmm. um, that sounds to me like uh, lifestyle choices because um, lifestyle choices uh, are very impactful on overall health and wellness. Um, you know, just how we manage our stress um, and some how we complicate some uh, medical conditions like diabetes and, and high blood pressure with our lifestyles, you know, uh, what we eat, how much we exercise. So how do you uh, approach someone um, who is resistant to making some different lifestyle choices so they can sleep better? So first of all, you, you, you don't make recommendations until you fully understand the picture. And so that journey begins through assessments conversation. And then we start hearing about, oh, I didn't keep a consistent sleep schedule uh, because I work nights, right? That's a shift worker. And automatically, ding, 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 another thing goes off for us, right? Okay. How much blue light exposure are they getting? Uh, do they sleep in a dark room? How do they transition from their nighttime work to their daytime? And so we look for things like are they relaxing 30 to you know 20 to 30 minutes before bedtime or are they getting into long conversations and uh, getting disrupted by work you know many people are living in the pandemic and they're constantly working and it's amazing to me how many people can't put the phone down they can't leave the phone outside the room so that's another clue to us oh, okay there's a problem with blue light right there's a problem with devices and technology emf right um another thing intake and so you listen. Again, the better listener you are, the better coach you are uh, from a sleep or any kind of coach. The more you want to just recommend, recommend, the harder it is for you to actually get success and have more resistance. But the more you understand your client, the easier it is then to say, you remember when you told me that you have a, a cup of coffee at two o'clock every day at three o'clock? You remember that you told me that right before sleep, you like coffee? I, you know how many people drink coffee at nine o'clock at night? because they, they like the warmth, they want something warm. And so that again is sleep hygiene, right? So I immediately go ding, ding, ding. Hey, let's switch out the coffee for a non-caffeinated tea. And it's warm and it's, you know, and then you have to know all the nuances. Like people have dire, um, dairy uh, allergies. They have allergies to the, 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 the environment in their house. Maybe they have a lot of dust in their house. And all are, again, ding, ding, ding. If your environment is creating chaos, then that's going to be part of our plan to clean up the environment, to maybe create a sanctuary where you can actually get rest, to provide maybe products like sleep masks or ear plugs or some kind of um, non-habit forming alternative stuff like, uh, let's say, maybe a, a sense, like a, uh, okay. what do you call that, like an, uh, an oil, uh, right? Essential oil. Mm -hmm essential yeah. oil yeah you can also provide something like i do i do melatonin spray before sleep for myself 
I, it helps me. 20, 30 minutes before I go to sleep, I spray. I don't take a, a, a pill because when you take a pill, there's no way to measure the amount of melatonin you're getting, right? And melatonin is one of those things you can actually take too much and feel awful in the morning, or you can take too little and not get the effects. So okay. by spraying, you can measure how much melatonin you're ingesting, and it allows you to get that perfect dose. So for me, it's four sprays. For another person, it might be six sprays. Another person, it might be two sprays. But you get to play with the spray and not have a commitment to a pill that you ingested and sleeps you know, with you. So um, that's, one, that, that's some of the stuff that I, I deal with with sleep hygiene. Most okay. of the time, it's asking a lot of questions and doing a lot of listening. Okay. Now, I know um, people vary because of... Um individual size, um, their metabolism, uh, lifestyle, work schedule, etc. How, given that, um, is there a typical amount of sleep that's recommended for adults? Well, the, the old, uh, the old kind of philosophy was everybody needed about six to eight hours sleep. And the, the weird thing is what happens, uh, when you have enough sleep, right? So if you have less sleep, you're more likely to have less performance in your day. So mm -hmm. under six hours, you tend to perform. You may think you're performing great, but you're actually supplementing it with caffeine or soda or something else. And you're, you're kind of lying to yourself with your system, right? You're, you're saying, yeah, I'm feeling fine, but I only slept four hours. So what I tell people is most people need anywhere to be comfortable anywhere from six to eight hours for an adult. But if you're a teenager, you don't need six to eight hours. You may need 10 hours. And, and people don't realize that because the younger you are, the more you, you sleep. Babies need 14, 15, 16 hours of sleep. And when you grow up, you need less sleep and you actually get less sleep. Um, so it's just a, it's a figuring out where you are, right? Because some people are long sleepers. But I don't know many adults that get like 10 hours sleep. There's a lot of people that say, I need 10 hours sleep. And I'm like, you're never going to get there because you're going to work up. It, it, the body isn't designed that way. And if you're sleeping 10 hours, then I would be diagnosing or, or try, not diagnosing, but asking you questions uh, uh, about, you know, maybe you're dealing with something else like uh, narcolepsy or another condition. Uh, okay. So that's, that's news to me about teenagers needing 10 hours of sleep because not they, me, they, they get less sleep than I do. <laughs> yeah, but, but the weird thing is not that they need, okay? So I want to make sure I'm not, I'm not talking in absolutes, but that they sleep longer is normal the younger you are. Okay. And they sleep longer, you know, they tend to sleep longer because they're still developing. Teenagers don't have all their neural links in their brains, uh, all the synapses going off, yes, yes. They, uh, it isn't until they reach maturity that all that settles and then they begin their regular sleep cycle. Babies, they keep people up all the time, right? You know this about newborns. They keep people up all the time and they're like, well, why isn't that baby sleeping? And it's because they haven't matured enough in their brain to get a regular circadian rhythm. That happens as it, for about six months, you got an erratic baby and then all of a sudden one day you start sleeping. And that's because it's developing the circadian rhythm. And, yeah. and that's something that people don't, aren't aware of. But that's also uh, another, you know, another thing about hours that, that really is interesting. Wow, that is very interesting. Now, I did read a study a few years ago that said um, uh, the sleep sleep matters in a 24 hour period, not necessarily overnight. So if you don't get the six hours at night, then you can catch up with the nap like the next day. And I, I love my naps. I love my TV naps. There's nothing better than waking up and realizing you were asleep. <laughs> so do you um, recommend naps for people? So here's the thing about napping. I nap regularly um, and I do nap myself. But uh, what I tell people is it's got to be part of your routine. And what I mean by that is when I nap, I don't nap on the couch and I don't nap with the TV on. Okay. And the reason for that is because I make it a measured nap. I know I'm going to sleep. I'm going to nap for 20, 30 minutes, maybe at two o'clock, three o'clock in the afternoon, usually between three and four is ideal. And I do that 20 minutes to refresh, recharge, and then get back out. But I'll do it in my bed if possible or on an office you know, sofa, but I won't do it in front of a TV. And the reason for that is it's all 
a habit forming. If you begin to associate sleep with your sofa, you're less likely to sleep when you're in your bed. Okay. And that's the weird thing about how we work as humans. So you have to associate the bed with sleep. When you go to your bed, you should not have recommended uh, to a lot of people. One of the things that clients always go to me, Tom, you're crazy. I'm not doing that. And I go, well, you should try it. And that is remove your TV and electronics from your bedroom. And they go, that's impossible. I can't do it. I watch TV before going to bed. And I say, you will be amazed. I did this about 10 years ago. My sleep improved exponentially ever since because you have no distractions. Um, you're not turning on the TV and fussing around with the remote and you're really focusing on just relaxing. So I tell them, replace the TV with a noise machine, a nice little white noise machine that you could put at your bedside. Put maybe a diffuser with some essential oils inside the diffuser. Get some darkened curtains, maybe a shade or two from where you're at, making sure that you're getting, when you go to nap, you can do it at any time. I have a blackout in my room. So literally when I close the door, it's black. It's completely dark. Okay. And so I don't have electronics. I have a diffuser. I have noise stuff. Um, I use, uh, there are a lot of tools that you can use that allow you to listen to audio and get oral neural stimulation. And if you do that, it's amazing what it can do for you. There's a ton of stuff on YouTube. You can look it up. Uh, sleep in three minutes, sleep in four minutes, and they use these tones. And I tell people, if you're an audio person, it's going to work for you. If you're not an audio person, then the white noise might work for you a little better and the, and the sense, right, the smell. But you want to stay away from blue light or anything that's going to keep you up. Okay. Okay. Now, you had mentioned earlier about um, the, the pandemic causing uh, a new sleep issue. Correct. Do you, ha do you have any um, new recommendations to, to combat that? Well, the, the weird thing is, and Fauci, uh, Dr. Fauci, who's been everywhere, has been saying this is, an, this is a real thing. People are dealing with insomnia on a, on a very big scale. Uh, what I would tell people is what's going on in the world today is something that we have to accept. And we need to accept that it is something that is impacting all our lives. We're all having the same level of frustration. You are not alone. That is a very important thing, that you are part of a community. You are not alone. And you may see the world. I mean, I, everyone has a very different uh, world view right now because some people uh, from an equality standpoint are, you know, they're, they're living a particular lifestyle that may afford them more flexibility than someone who is of, uh, you know, uh, of a, a lower lifestyle or a, a, a more constrictive lifestyle where they don't have that availability. Money. <laughs> you know, I, I tell people all the time, I grew up in Brooklyn, all right, um, and, and when I hear noise, uh, I heard good and bad noises growing up. And so I tell people all the time, between what I, I lived the first half of my life in Brooklyn and then the second half of my youth in Connecticut, and it was night and day, where in Brooklyn you were hearing gunshots in Connecticut, you were hearing cows. And so it's weird that you can see both sides of the road there. And hopefully I can help people understand that you have to accept where we're at. And you, and regardless of where you think you are, you can create your sanctuary. So even if you're in a neighborhood that is always on, like living in a city, you can always find a, a way, maybe buy some headphones. And there are plenty of sleep headphones now available that you can actually put them on. They're like a little band and okay. you're gonna start stimulating and getting oral so to, to get you that audio uh, frequency. And no matter how chaotic your environment, you can find solace, all okay. right? So my advice uh, during this time, find solace through the other steps that we talked about. Uh, smell, sight, sound, all of that's gonna help you. You gotta treat the anxiety, you gotta treat that that you know that I don't accept what's going on. I'm trying to control it. You got to treat that piece of it, and then you're able. And if you can, uh, if you have the ability to speak to someone, do not suffer in silence. Oh, that's um, amazing advice. And there are so many teletherapy platforms these days where you can Absolutely. talk to someone on the phone or uh, via video, and it's very effective, surprisingly. Yeah. So um, thank you for that. Thank you. And I do agree that, yes, you absolutely can um, find solace and, and make your situation as peaceful as possible wherever you are. 
Right. And a lot, a lot of that starts with the mindset. So, regardless of income that. level, I think that people yeah. don't. I mean, it isn't it isn't talked about enough, right? Because people are we have a certain inequality that nobody wants to address in the country, and that everybody is addressing at the same time. And exactly. so, it's like everybody's taking at it from different perspectives. But sleep, I, I tell people, and I'm really working on this. And in the future, hopefully, I can publish some work, real hard evidence. But I, I believe that there is a direct correlation between all of the strife that societies experience and the lack of sleep that the societies experience. So if you go to places like Bombay, India, and New Delhi, they have chaotic streets, chaotic roads, very chaotic cities, and they get less sleep. And then if you go to places that are remote in the world, um, you will find that people get better sleep. So why is that? Um, so we have to really recognize that the lack of sleep that creates chaos, and it's a, like a vicious circle. The chaos, the protest, the stuff that happens, it happens because there are uh, communities that are pressured and that those pressures don't let them sleep, don't let them relax. And those things kind of you know, hurt our, our society. And so we need to learn how to really tie those things. I'm still doing a lot of research on it, but okay. I that's my that's one of my goals is to really talk about how societal societal impacts of a vicious circle with sleep okay definitely let me know when um you've completed the, your research because i'd be interested to know your findings mm -hmm. and i agree that you know sleep is poor sleep mm -hmm. is is to me equal to poor health yes. and when you're in poor health physical mental emotional or spiritual you do unhealthy things, you hurt pe other people, you hurt yourself. And yeah. collectively, that is a major problem for society and the world. So um, I totally agree with you about that. Um, so, oh my gosh, I could talk to you about this all day because there's so much to learn about sleep. You've given us um, quite a few tips. And I know on your website, you also, you have uh, downloads, you have other tips and information. Tell us about that. So I'm working right now on the productivity and getting people very productive using sleep to empower their lives. And so my first uh, step into that is to provide a free download on my website that is uh, five tips to improve your sleep through productivity. So these are very simple exercises and things that, you know, I give you a little bit of research, a little bit of stats on what's going on in the world and why we can't get our productivity going. And it's really because we're not really focusing on how sleep impacts our productivity. So that's the first thing. I'm doing a course that's going to both be for individuals and for companies. And so if you have a workforce, remember I told you I was a project manager. Mm -hmm. And one of the things, being a certified scrum master, working in very pressured environments, I also learned that my team's productivity would drop when I would ask people, well, how did you sleep last night? And it was amazing to see everyone's individual issues that led to the delay in the production of a particular item that we were building okay. and it was always related to sleep it was always related to you would see how people would eat lunch and they were eating tons of calories and they were eating lo lots of sugars and they were micro snacking all day and and then they come back and they oh i'm too tired or i i need an extra day to deliver my code and you realize wait a minute this is all sleep related let's let's talk about how sleep and stress management actually improve productivity in the workplace. So I'm doing that for individuals because we're a lot of us are working from home and I'm also doing it for companies. So companies can go to, uh, everyone can go to sleepguycoaching.com and feel free to schedule an appointment uh, with me if you'd like a consultation, uh, if you'd like to talk more about your sleep history. And you can also go on there and get the free download and join, join our mailing list. We're expanding, we're growing, and we're real excited where the future looks so far. Okay, very good. And you do offer um, complimentary consultations, correct? Correct. Uh, for most people, I, I spend 45 minutes of time. If they, if they really want a consultation and tell me about their sleep history, I'm happy to spend that first 45 minutes to really get to know you. And then once I understand a little bit about you, I can offer up some options. I, I don't believe just some coaches go directly into here's what I offer. 
Um, I don't believe in that because, uh, you know, th there's so many nuances. And so if there is a quick way, a quick solution to spin up, then I can say, here's a program or an option. But most of the time, it's a combination of some referrals to the doctors or to see a doctor and a program that they can follow for sleep hygiene at home. Okay. All right. Fantastic. Oh, my gosh. This has been um, enlightening for me. Thank you. Um, so just what is the one nugget, the one thing you want to share with the world about sleep? So if we were to set, if we were to sum it up, right, um, sleep advocacy begins with you. And so begins with the individual. And so what I tell people is when you go into your doctor, don't assume your doctor understands your sleep issues. Don't assume that. Always go in and ask the questions and, and allow them to essentially listen to what it is you're going through. So express to them, I'm having trouble because of X, Y, and Z. Some, I had a death in the family or this or that or whatever it is. Express what you're going through. And if your doctor is not, is it, if your doctor is immediately saying, take a sleep aid, that is a clue that you should probably get a second opinion because prescribing and over-prescribing, there's over 22 million people who suffer from sleep apnea. There's over 60% of Americans that suffer from insomnia. And there's 20% of the world's population that takes sleep aids. Could you believe that? Sleep aids are like 20% of the population. Just drop them from over the counter to the doctor. And so I tell people, if you're going to go to a doctor and you're going to describe what your sleep condition is, make sure you're your own advocate and that if you're not getting the answers, get a second opinion, feel free to drop me a line. I'll be happy to talk to you about where you can go to get the proper answers to get the best sleep. Okay, all right, fantastic. Be your own advocate. And that will work well in pretty much any area of life. <laughs> well, there's a lot of people that won't be advocates for themselves and they'll just take the medicine and they'll get really bad results because of sleep aids, and we don't have a lot of time, but sleep aids uh, tend to actually throw off the circadian rhythm. And so if you take sleep aids excessively, you're actually messing with that rhythm and never going into a deep sleep state. And you know there, there are various stages in sleep. If you're not getting enough deep sleep, you could be having all kinds of pe people's car accidents happen. Uh, you know, all this stuff happens as a result of lack of sleep. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much. And I hope uh, everybody reaches out to you for a consultation because sleep is, you know, like you said, it's a pillar of health and Absolutely. It, it matters. It, it really does matter. So thank you again for your time. I really appreciate it. And thank you for the, the information. It was, I it was appreciate helpful. it. Thank you very much for having me on your show. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you again for tuning in to this episode of The Glenn Alex Show. I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Tom on the importance of sleep. You can catch The Glenn Alex Show on YouTube and multiple podcast platforms like iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and others. And please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you. Be a precious spirit with a nourishing thought. Please allow me to leave you with this nourishing thought. Warren Zevin said, I'll sleep when I'm dead. I have a friend who uses that line often. And my reply to him is, don't sleep and you will be dead. Like my friends, so many people underestimate and dismiss the importance of good sleep to overall health. Without good, deep, restorative sleep, the body cannot heal. You cannot manage stress well. You won't be able to focus or concentrate or be productive. And you won't lose weight. Yeah, sleep is good and important. For tips on how to rest well or sleep well, please read my blog, The Beauty of Sleeping, on glennalex.com, where I share my rest up method. Or you can also reach out to Tom uh, for a, a complimentary sleep consultation. And until next time, rest up and be well.